In this little series of videos, I'll show you how to create new weapons uh, from your 3D modeling application into Unity until they are functional weapons inside of FPS Control, absolutely without writing any line of code because we've already done that hard work for you. So this is going to be pretty exciting. Let's get started. If I go to the FPS Control Assets folder, and then into the art packs that we've supplied for you, and then into Shellshock Desk Guns, which it holds all the guns that we've supplied, then you will see that there are two weapons in here. One of them is the uh, hands with the Beretta, and the other one is the M16. Now, these are FBX files. They're exported outside of uh, 3D Studio Max, and um, you know they had the animation done in all in one timeline. So what we had to do here at the Animations tab is split all the animations up so that Unity knows what the difference is. Now, you may not have to do that. Uh, for example, you can also save the animations under the same name, but then in the file name add an add symbol and then the name of the animation so that you have one for each one file for each animation and then Unity will automatically already assign it if you don't want to do things in one timeline. But in this case, the file was set up that way. Now, you don't necessarily have to use FBX files. It is probably the best thing to do though. But if you, for example, will use Maya or Blender or 3D Studio Max, you can just move those files in here just by dragging and dropping them together with their textures and Unity will run Maya or Max or what have you in the background and export it to FBX for you. However, if you then share your entire project with somebody else on your team and they don't have that software installed, it won't, in, it won't import it right. So uh, you may as well export it as FBX and use that convention. Uh, at least that's what we do. Okay, so if I open this up here with a little triangle, and if you don't see the assets this way, you may be in one column layout. So I'm going to go to the two column layout here. And if I hit the little triangle, it opens up and it shows us all the uh, assets that it has imported from this FPS, uh, or I'm sorry, FBX model. So there are a couple mashes here and there are a couple animations. So here are all the animations that I need. However, when it imports it, it says these are the animations that come with the file, so you cannot change them. They are read only, not write. And we have to do some writing to these animations in a little while. So we may have to come up with a little fix here. So I'm going to right click and create a new folder and call that M16 Anims for animations. Then I'm going to select all of these and then go edit, duplicate and that will create a copy of these animations and those are writable. So I'm going to drag those into the M16 animation folder. Now if I go into that folder, you can see that all the animations are there. Let's go back up. Let's grab this M16 here and drag it into the scene. Of course we need this parent object. We don't need all the, the subs because we don't want to separate them from each other. However, the animations that are defined in here are still the ones that come in by default. So I'm going to go to my M16 folder and replace them. So activate here and change my idols. So the reason I'm doing this is because uh, we need to add some uh, magic to it eventually. So we're not going to do that in this video yet uh, because we have some other things to do first. But it is very important because we need to specify in the engine when the particles start, when the gun fires, for example, uh, those type of things. So we need to know um, and we need to define that inside of the animation itself. And that is why they need to be writable. Where's my run? Here's my run. And sprint. Excellent. And then deactivate, finally. All right, cool. So that replaced everything um, in the animations. So if I go to my animation tab here, and if you don't have it, you can switch to it by um, coming down here and choosing Add Tab Animation. And I can uh, I can see that I have forgotten just one, the activate one, because it's read only. Uh, so I need to go fix that. And that's probably this top one here. That's the one that I forgot. Okay. So just to double check, I've done it right. Now you can see that all the animations are not read-only, so I could write to them. Okay, that's cool. Next, we need to make sure that our player um, recognizes this mash and animation as a weapon. So this would be the perfect time to explain how the weapon system is organized inside of FPS Control. If I go over here to the right into the player, and I open it up, I go into its upper body, then I go into the main camera, 
and then I see a little um, empty placeholder here that's called weapons and underneath weapons we will have all the weapons now in this case there's only one app weapon added and that's the Beretta but we want to add multiples there so that's what we need to do however we cannot add this um, 3D mesh all at once we need to do a little bit of work first so first go up and say game object and create an empty one so this creates an empty game object in the scene I can move it around you know and it doesn't have anything other than the position what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that game object underneath weapons and so now it is officially a weapon although it's empty however it's not positioned right so go up to the right here toggle this button and click reset and that resets it and moves it exactly on the position that the player is or its parent object which in this case is the weapons so then I'm going to rename it and call it M16 excellent this object is still empty of course so we're going to grab our M16 model that we've rigged up all diligently with our animations and drag that on top of the M16 then we're going to select it and reset the position of that one as well and there you have it now it's part of the player uh, if I go to game view you can see it's kind of blocking our view uh, so we could change that by you know moving it up or down just a little bit Let's see now now it's really not helping <laughs> so maybe down a little bit more excellent so this this arm here was already there for the for the Beretta you could do the same for that but first uh, let's get a good overview of what's gonna happen next okay so that's working now I'm going to grab the uh, M16 and I'm going to do something you probably not expect let's go to our project let's go back out of the art assets and go into the prefabs folder and then the weapons folder then I'm going to drag this M16 in there so that it becomes a prefab so that we can reuse it later and you can see that it's been turned blue into the editor which means it's a prefab now but now we're going to do something crazy we're going to select it and delete it command backspace or command delete on Mac or uh, delete key on Windows you're asking why are we deleting it we spend all this time you know rigging it up well that was only for the positioning the rest of it is done by the magic of FPS control and it adds all kinds of cool stuff to it so that is what we'll do next in the next video so it's really going to be fun from here on uh, we've done the prep work but next we're going to just assign it as a functional weapon it's going to recognize automatically all the animations and we're going to add particle effects and sounds and all that good stuff so uh, see you in the next video